Hey everyone, Dybram here, bringing you a SSF guide on Beyond. In this video, I will explain everything about the mechanic, including a test I did with 100 maps. But most of all, I will be answering if and when Beyond is worth running in SSF. So, let's dive in. Let's first properly introduce Beyond as a leak mechanic. Beyond demons do not naturally spawn in maps, similar to how Harbinger monsters don't just randomly appear. You can force them to spawn in maps via the Atlas passive nodes that add a chance for Beyond demons to be attracted to your maps, as well as by using a Beyond Scarab or the Beyond Map Device Craft. I tried to figure out if any of these values actually stack or whether the value is binary, meaning they either spawn or they don't. I think it's the latter, meaning there's no point in taking both the Beyond Scarab and the Map Device Craft option of Beyond. They do the same thing and they don't stack. That is my working assumption here, but if I'm wrong, feel free to comment with a link to a source stating how it really works in 3.25. I will pin that comment, so be on the lookout. Beyond demons are divided into three factions, Demonic, Flesh and Pale. The leader of the Demonic monsters is Katash, the leader of the Flesh monsters is Gore, and the leader of the Pale monsters is Bedad, who you can also encounter in Sanctum where she has struck a deal with Lysia. Bosses always drop Tainted Currency, where regular monsters only have a very small chance to drop Tainted Currency. Only one of the demon factions can spawn in a map, so it is never a mix of different beyond demons. You can influence the odds of a faction spawning in the atlas tree as well. I want to talk a little bit about the way beyond works and how it scales. When a monster is killed in a beyond enabled map, there is a 15% chance for a small red orb to appear on the ground. Unless you're paying attention, with the visual clarity of Path of Exile, you're typically not going to see these. But in this footage, you can see the small red orbs. If four of these red orbs appear close to each other, by default close to each other means roughly one screen, portals will open, spawning beyond demons. Once a substantial number of beyond demons have spawned in the instance, each pack spawned grants a stacking chance for the next pack in that area to be replaced by a boss. So the more beyond demons you kill, the higher the chances of a boss spawning. Only one beyond boss can spawn per map, and once the boss has spawned, beyond portals will no longer appear in that instance, effectively disabling the beyond mechanic. The Atlas Tide Atlas Keystone blocks beyond bosses from spawning, and thus it keeps the mechanic active. Now that you understand the concept of the red orbs and how they turn into portals, which then summon beyond demons, the Atlas passive nodes make a bit more sense at least. Although it seems that on the Atlas tree, the red orbs are referred to as portals, which is confusing. Because as far as I can tell, it is only the red orbs that are merging, and the portals themselves do not merge at all, but simply spawn beyond monsters. However, the Atlas passive nodes don't mention their red orbs, they only mention portals. So it's quite confusing actually. The Atlas passive nodes that increase the chance of beyond portals spawning, more likely than not actually increase the chances of those red orbs appearing. Whereas the merging radius, which is by default roughly one screen, affects how far the red orbs can be away from each other before four of those can merge and form an actual portal that spawns beyond monsters. If you take all possible Atlas passive nodes, which I did, you have a 30% increased chance to spawn portals, which I think is actually a 30% increased chance to spawn the red orbs. That would mean the actual chance of spawning red orbs is 15% times 1.3, which is 19.5% chance, which PoE likely rounds down to a 19% chance to spawn red orbs. And the reason I think it works like this is because the wiki states that four red orbs always form a portal. And so there's no chance involved there, you just need four and then it either works or it doesn't. Talking about merging radius, you will get a 44% increased merging radius from the atlas, which should mean that red orbs merge across roughly 1.4 screens instead of one screen. That is just my understanding of it. This is clearly very hard to test, if not simply impossible to test, but this to the best of my knowledge is how the mechanics work and how the nodes in the atlas and your scarabs relate to the actual beyond mechanic. Suffice to say, both merging radius and portal chances are good 
as they create more beyond monsters which means more loot that part is at least undisputable lastly regardless of if the above is entirely correct what is definitely the case is that beyond scales with the number of regular monsters in the map because each regular monster no matter if it is native to the map or added by a leak mechanic or a scarab has that 15 percent chance to spawn a red orb and trigger the cascading portals and beyond demons so the more monsters you jam into a map the more beyond monsters spawn and the more tainted currency and other loot you get, making beyond skill well with methods that add tons of monsters to a map, especially in confined areas because of the merging. So leak mechanics like Harbinger, Ritual or Breach synergize well with beyond. I couldn't figure out if item quantity and rarity impact the rates and rarity of tainted currency, but you would assume it does. I think taking item rarity from altars improves the loot, but it's really hard to test this once again, because the monsters hardly drop any tainted currency to begin with. I've ran a test with 100 maps, where I divided the testing parameters between scarabs and no scarabs, and taking the endless tide note or not. The maps are all tier 16 maps with at least 60% quantity, they're either jungle valley or toxic sewer. On the map device I took domination for shrines just to make the mapping a bit smoother. I didn't aim to pack the map with as many monsters as possible, which is what you should actually do. Rather, I just wanted a fair side by side comparison so you can see in which circumstances taking beyond may be worth it, especially in SSF. And then you can extrapolate that information to your own instances and to how you would like to play your solo self found adventures. During the test, I have only looked at tainted currency, not at any other loot. Tainted currency in SSF I think is the main reason for playing Beyond, that's at least my opinion. Next to this, Beyond is also great for juicing mechanics and juicing maps because it adds so many monsters to your map. A hypothesis I primarily wanted to test is if running Beyond with bosses is better than running it with Endless Tide, so without bosses. My idea was and is that if you don't choose the maps with tons of monsters, it is much better to focus on the beyond bosses as they spawn guaranteed tainted currency. And because we're playing solo self found, we can't always guarantee endless juice into these maps because you just may not have the scarabs or there may be other reasons maybe you don't want to invest. So I think this is therefore a relevant comparison. In trade, this comparison, as with many of these tests that I do, they make a lot less sense because you can just buy scarabs and juice maps. But in SSF, clearly you do not have that option. Plus there are not that many scarabs available, I find, this league. So let's see to what extent that hypothesis is true. Let's look at the results. The first batch of 25 maps were run without scarabs and with the endless tide node enabled, which means that beyond bosses cannot spawn. The loot I got out of those maps was 4 tainted chromatic orbs, 3 tainted jeweler orbs, 6 tainted armor scraps and 2 tainted orbs of fusing. That seems bad and it's not great, but you must remember I am not doing any effort really to juice the maps with monsters in this situation. The second batch of 25 maps were run without scarabs and without the endless tide node, plus some beyond boss atlas nodes which we will talk about in the atlas passive tree. So beyond bosses can spawn. You must realize that the boss doesn't always spawn. In fact, 13 out of 25 times the boss didn't spawn at all. So without scarabs, the chances of a boss appearing in your unjuiced map is around 50%, based on a limited data set, of course. This chance goes up quite a lot when you add more monsters because of those stacking odds, right? We talked about this earlier. The more monsters you kill, the higher the chances are to spawn a beyond boss. Despite seeing the boss only half of the time, we got significantly more loot. 12 chromatic, 15 jeweler, 11 armorer, 1 fusing, 5 blacksmith and 2 mythic orbs. The third batch of 25 maps were run with scarabs and without the endless tide node. So the same atlas as batch 2 and bosses can spawn. The scarabs used are a regular beyond scarab which in hindsight is likely a wasted scarab as my passive atlas tree already gives 100% beyond spawn chance which I actually didn't realize. 
Then I added a Beyond Scarab of Invasion for more portals, a Beyond Scarab of Hemophilia for 30% increased merge radius, making that merge radius around 1.7 screens, a Beyond Scarab of Resurgence which buffs the Beyond bosses, making them do a lot more damage, it makes them spawn more often and it makes their rewards better, and finally a Scarab of Adversaries for 4 mirrored rare monster packs because more monsters are good. This time only 6 out of 25 maps did the boss not spawn, meaning that in 19 maps I got a beyond boss to spawn. The results are by far the best, looking at all the 4 batches. I had 43 chromatic, 38 jewelers, 23 armorers, 7 fusings, 9 blacksmiths and 1 mythic orb. The 4th and last batch of 25 maps were run with scarabs and with the endless tide. The Beyond Scarab of Resurgence was replaced by an Elder Scarab. The loot is less impressive, primarily because the rest of the Atlas tree isn't focused on adding tons of monsters to the map. By juicing maps, again, you would get much more loot, or at least somewhat more loot. But still, I am not sure you are ever beating spawning simply bosses. The results for this test were 12 Chromatic, 10 Jeweler, 12 Armorer, 4 Fusings and a single Blacksmith making it even worse than not using scarabs but spawning beyond bosses. It's very clear that the regular beyond monsters tainted currency loot has been nerfed substantially. Previously, you would get quite a lot of currency from simply killing the regular monsters and I always felt that Endless Tide was the way to go. That is clearly not true anymore, assuming you are after tainted currency in SSF. Spawning beyond bosses and killing those yields much better results. Here is the Alice tree that I would recommend after all the testing. Assuming you are after tainted currency, I wouldn't recommend Endless Tide, unless you fill your maps to the brim with monsters and run tier 17s, maybe at that point the regular monsters drop more loot than the bosses would. Assuming you are running tier 16s and just have standard map juice, I would instead focus on the beyond bosses. The entire Atlas tree is in the description, it is a generic one without anything too special on there. It is not a tree designed to put as many monsters in the map as possible. I might run and test out a tree one day like that, you know. But for now, here are the beyond nodes that I would recommend regardless of what else you put on your tree. You want all the minor ones for effects mentioned earlier in the video. Fiendish Opulence increases Tainted Currency drop rates. Demonic Power is just one point for a small buff after you kill the boss, you might as well take it. Scent of Blood simply means more Beyond Monsters. The Torn Veal increases the chance of spawning a Beyond boss. And Pale Clarion increases the chances of spawning Beta and the Pale Beyond Monsters because I personally like basic currency in SSF. Tainted Currency is not basic currency, so it doesn't spawn more Tainted Currency, but still. Beidat is arguably the hardest boss of the free to defeat however, so there is that to consider. I want to quickly touch on how to use the loot that you're getting, like how is this Tainted Currency working and why is it valuable. This has everything to do with the fact it can alter corrupted items, while otherwise corrupted items cannot be altered anymore. That is sort of the point of them being corrupt, they cannot be further changed. However, with tainted currency, they can. The tainted armorer scrap changes the quality of a corrupted item to a random value between 0 and 20%. Previously, before 3.25, that quality went up to 29 or 30 percent, but that is not the case anymore. A tainted blacksmith whetstone does the exact same thing, but for weapons. A tainted chaos orb either reforges a corrupted rare item with new random modifiers, or it removes all of its modifiers. Tainted Chaos Orbs are incredibly rare, I only have one of them in the entire league. Tainted Chromatic Orbs change the socket colors, it ignores the item's stat requirements or attribute requirements, therefore giving it better chances of obtaining off-color sockets. Normally, the colors that you roll on gear, on sockets of gear, are influenced by the attribute requirements of that specific gear piece. This is why an astral plate, which requires a lot of strength, primarily rolls red sockets. Tainted chromatic orbs completely ignore this mechanic, making them useful if you want to get four blue sockets on an astral plate, which would normally be very hard to do. A tainted divine teardrop raises or lowers modifier tiers, this is an incredibly rare currency once again. 
A tainted exalted orb probably just as rare either adds or removes a modifier on a corrupted item. Then we get back to obtainable tainted currency with the jeweler's orb which adds or removes a socket. You can use the bench to craft for example 4 sockets on a corrupted item which isn't super expensive it is only 10 jewelers and 10 val orbs. From that point you can use tainted jewelers orbs to try and get 5 or 6 sockets. Getting 6 sockets is a 25% chance which isn't bad. Similarly you can use tainted orbs of fusing which work in the exact same way but then for removing or adding links. You can 4 link a corrupted item for only 5 fusings and 5 val orbs and then gamble with the tainted fusings for a 25% chance for a 6 link. It's a 50% chance to get a 5 link and it's then another 50% chance to get a 6 link. If you fail and go to 3 links or 3 sockets, you simply recraft the 4 sockets or links from the bench. It's a great way to get a 6 linked item in SSF. Finally we have the tainted mythic orb which either turns a corrupted item into a unique or it destroys it. The wiki has a whole calculation sheet but what you need to know is that the chance of destroying an item is at least 50% and in some cases much closer to 90%. The mythic orb takes the base items into account however, so using it on a corrupted solaris circlet, you could get a Wilma's requital for a ballista build, but that chance is only around 7%. Let's score the strategy on a few aspects. These are basically my pros and cons if you will, but then categorized. First, fun. I think it's fun. It's quick, it's easy, there's nothing wrong with it. The time spent in maps was between 3-4 to four minutes on average, depending of course on your build and the map you choose. In my case I'm running an RF Chieftain and all my maps are Jungle Valley and Toxic Sewer. Gold earned isn't relevant because beyond monsters don't drop gold at the moment of riding. Rippiness, the regular monsters are not dangerous at all, although the enraged beyond bosses can be very dangerous for sure. Build requirements, as these monsters aren't super tanky or dangerous, a lot of builds should be able to do beyond. RF Chieftain works great at least and it's not a super strong build. Loot is in my opinion mostly worthwhile if you spawn bosses and invest in the strategy. Without investment, returns are quite low and I think you're better off taking different mechanics and scarabs. Just running a single beyond scarab on juiced maps could work out too, even without any atlas nodes invested in the beyond mechanic. Anything in between though, I don't really see it work out too well for you. Finally, the SSF value. As tainted currency only comes from beyond monsters, there is plenty of value in SSF. That being said, it is not like you use tainted currency as often as for example exalted or annulment orbs. I personally consider tainted currency a nice to have currency and it's a decent way to get 6 linked items. It is however not the case that your average crafted gear in a build guide relies on tainted currency because you wouldn't craft on corrupted items normally speaking. Therefore it's more of an advanced method, for example when you have double corrupted chest armor in the incursion temple and now you want to color and 6 link it. In that case it's valuable. But that's a fairly advanced strategy already, not everyone in SSF does that. It was a long video guys but I hope you try out this strategy and I hope you learn something about the beyond mechanic. Let me know what you think. Also let me know if you have any suggestions. Subscribe and like for more PoE SSF guides. Thanks for watching and making it to the end. Love you all, see you soon, bye bye.